high drama in Washington, the Attorney General's Capitol Hill snub, a contempt threat, and the constitutional collision course now set in motion. This haymaker last hour thrown by the Speaker of the House. Nancy Pelosi telling reporters in the Capitol she thinks the Attorney General, William Barr, is a criminal. What is deadly serious about it is the Attorney General of the United States of America was not telling the truth to the Congress of the United States. That's a crime. He lied to Congress. He lied to Congress. If, and if anybody else did that, it would be considered a crime. Uh, nobody is above the law, not the President of the United States and not the Attorney General. That blistering statement from the Speaker, a dramatic escalation, and it adds to a morning chorus of Democrat after Democrat accusing the nation's top lawyer of leading a cover-up for the President. The House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler opened the morning by scolding the empty chair that was for the Attorney General. Nadler says he'll make one more what he calls good faith attempt to get Barr back before the committee. But if Barr does not agree, and if the Justice Department does not fold and allow committee lawyers to ask questions, Chairman Nadler says he will hold the Attorney General of the United States in contempt. Nadler framed today's stare down and the Trump White House's blanket defiance of congressional investigations in big constitutional terms. Republicans say this morning, nothing more than a charade. We go back to a circus political stunt to say we want it to look like an impeachment hearing because they won't bring impeachment proceedings. That's the reason. CNN's Manu Raju live on Capitol Hill tracking all of this drama. Manu, it was a tense day to begin with. The Speaker of the House saying the Attorney General has committed a crime. Wow. It's very significant escalation of words. The question is, what do Democrats do next? You mentioned one of the steps they plan to take, hold the Attorney General in contempt. That, uh, in reference to the failure of the Justice Department to turn over the unredacted Mueller report with the underlying evidence, the Justice Department so far only providing the full Congress with a redacted version of the report, allowing a less redacted version to be viewed by 12 members of Congress. That's not sufficient to Democrats. Also, they plan to issue a subpoena to force the Attorney General to come to Capitol Hill. But what we've seen from this administration is battling subpoenas. That's leading some Democrats to say, what should we do next now that they're essentially ignoring our request to compel either testimony or records? Some Democrats, including Ted Lieu, told me that it's time to start talking about impeachment. If the Trump administration wants impeachment, they're doing a good job of pushing the Democrats there because we want to first gather facts to decide if we should impeach. If we can't gather facts, then we're going to launch an Article 3 impeachment of under what Nixon happened to him. Article 3 of his impeachment proceedings was obstructing Congress. So if we can't gather facts, that may be the only tool we have left and we're going to use it if we have no other tools available. So I asked him whether or not he had gotten any assurances from Jerry Nadler or Nancy Pelosi about pursuing the impeachment route. He just said that this is his opinion, but he said it's, quote, unifying his caucus. And John, Pelosi referenced the same fight about concerns about defying congressional subpoenas, but she also raised concerns again about impeachment dying at the Senate's edge. So that tension bound to play out as the administration rejects Democratic request after request. John. Tension and understatement, I think. Manu Raju, live on the Hill. Appreciate the live reporting with me here in studio to share their reporting and their insights. CNN's Caitlin Collins, Michael Bender with The Wall Street Journal, Paul Kane with The Washington Post, and Laura Barone Lopez with Politico. Uh, the question, let's start first with the Speaker and House Democrats. To say the Attorney General of the United States committed a crime uh, is only going to stoke uh, the liberal faction of her base, you just heard Congressman Liu, who says, look, if they're not going to answer the subpoenas, if they're not going to give us documentation, they won't even give us a witness why wait? How does she hold that balance together when we know her personal opinion is have weeks and weeks, if not months, of hearings and lay out the case? Don't rush. Uh, that's just, this is the trick. I don't know. She's standing on a ledge. Um, this is much further than she was two weeks ago before uh, the congressional recess. And uh, she has got these swing district Democrats who spent two weeks at home and they didn't hear anything about impeachment. They barely heard anything about Bob Mueller or the Mueller report. But back here, her caucus is really pushing harder and harder on this. Um, I don't know where, where this goes in the next few weeks. And, and let's have more of the speaker because you're right. She has moved. Uh, so you called it a ledge. Uh, there are some people who think the White House is nudging them out on this ledge, that they actually want this fight to see if the Democrats go forward. But listen to the speaker here who has said for weeks 
slow down. The votes aren't there in the Senate anyway. It's not worth doing. Just have your hearing. She doesn't like to talk about the details of impeachment. Here today, she talked about the details. On the articles of impeachment uh, for uh, President Nixon, uh, Article 3 was that he ignored the subpoenas. I think that the statements being made by the President of the United States has given a blanket statement that he's not going to honor any subpoenas uh, is obstruction of justice. We are in a very, very, very challenging place. So that's why I say sometimes impeachment is the easy way out for some of these people because they know it will end uh, at the Senate's edge. How does she keep this together? I mean, I was just talking to a top House Democrat who said that Pelosi in their caucus meeting today, yes, she said that what Barr did, uh, she considered a crime, but she also didn't lay out any specific actions that they should take. She pretty much just said that her committee chairmen and chairwomen need to start helping connect the dots for the American public. So that means holding hearings. Uh, so they're going to push forward with these investigations, but that's different than starting the actual impeachment proceedings. And also this Democrat, uh, John Yarmouth of Kentucky, he said that um, he doesn't think that there's a risk for Democrats politically. In his district, yes, it's a little, it's bluer than some of the more battleground ones, but he hears a lot about why aren't you guys pushing harder against Trump? Uh, and as Paul said, in the battleground districts, um, you go to them and you don't hear about Mueller at all. These uh, voters are concerned about health care and they're concerned about other issues. So they may not be hearing what's going uh, on in D.C. And, and in this fight, calling the Attorney General of the United States a liar, saying a criminal because he did it under oath before Congress, the Justice Department spokeswoman saying this baseless attack on the Attorney General is reckless, irresponsible, and false. That from Kerry Kupek at the Justice Department pushing back. Uh, but. But let's get to the core here. The Speaker of the House says the Attorney General lied under oath, the nation's top attorney. This is the issue. The last time, not yesterday when the Attorney General was before the Senate, before that, this is back in April 9th, he was before the House, and he was asked this question by Democratic Congressman Charlie Crist of Florida. Reports have emerged recently, uh, General, that members of the special counsel's team are frustrated at some level with the limited information included in your March 24th letter, uh, that it does not adequately or accurately necessarily portray the report's findings. Do you know what they're referencing with that? No, I don't. Uh, he went on to say the Attorney General did that there was some frustration. He acknowledged some frustration. The question is, that is April 9th. Okay? This is the March 27th letter from Robert Mull, the special counsel, to the Attorney General complaining saying, hey, what you put out does not accurately portray what my report says. So Bill Barr says he's not lying because he was asked about reports. Uh, and so he wasn't being fully honest. There's no question he was not being transparent. He didn't say, no, Congressman, I don't know what the reports are about. But I talked to Bob Mueller. He's mad at me. He sent me a letter. He could have said that, but he didn't. But is that perjury or is it just fine-tuned spin by, an, by a trained lawyer. Well, and though Pelosi made that statement today, it didn't sound like she was ready to take it any steps further because she said if it was anyone else who did this, they would be facing uh, repar the consequences essentially for doing so. But White House officials who watched that moment yesterday when he was trying to explain that away when he told the lawmaker, no, I did not, or I don't know what they're talking about, they thought that was one of the weaker moments of Bill Barr's testimony yesterday because he did have such a struggle in explaining it because he was saying, well, I don't know of any of the frustrations from his team, but he obviously heard tw not once, but twice from the special counsel himself. So that was not a great moment. What White House officials are counting on here is that Democrats are going to get out ahead of their skis or they're going to try to get in this legal fight over the subpoenas, trying to get Bill Barr to come and be questioned by staff lawyers. And that it's going to be a legal fight that's going to but, drag out and they're not going to have to deal to with it. But to the staff lawyer question, that's why Bill Barr would not come today. He was willing to come and be questioned by House members. The chairman of the, on the Democratic side wanted staff lawyers to question him. Why? They wanted trained prosecutors to follow up on questions like Charlie Chris to try to get the attorney general in a trap to say that you didn't tell the truth. They wanted to do more.